I want us to talk about the roadmap to the One New Nigeria. Mm. What is the roadmap to the new? What, what exactly is the One New Nigeria? What, mm. what, what, is, what is this all about? Well, the One New Nigeria movement is about promoting unity and celebrating our diversity. Because we believe that Nigeria is a beautiful country. You see the beautiful people. I believe that the future of Nigeria is actually beautiful and bright too. And what, we, what we're trying to do, ensure right now is that we're ensure to engage stakeholders in the community, influentials, even regular people on the street to start talking about that new Nigeria. Mm. There's been a lot of hate speech, a lot of um, um, negative comments coming out in the media. We don't want hate speech again. We want love speech. We want to change the paradigm of Nigerians from thinking negative about the country to start speaking positively and thinking positively. About, about, about the country. I know to build my, my country, the diaspora PR, and for you to reach this level of success, you have to think positively, you have to act positively, and you have to speak life into your situation. If we begin to do that as Nigerians, we shall begin to see change in our nation. Now, the, the one in Nigeria movement, I remember um, um, uh, um, Apostle Trude Bakari in his um, State of the Nation address on Sunday. Yeah. He said he one thing. One exactly. He said something, and this, and this is an idea I formed while back in the UK without even knowing this kind of thing, because I believe there's a change in the system, a change in the spiritual realm, also in the physical, that this, has, this is imperative. He said that he sees a new north rising. He says he sees a new south rising. You understand? United. And I believe that is what is going to happen in Nigeria, whereby we're going to have new ways of coexisting. Nigeria is one as it is right now. People are agitating for various um, sections and different, for different factions, but we're going to stay one. Now, we can't stay one unless we renegotiate our unity. We come together and say that these are the terms of, un of unity. Are we going to go back to the 1963 constitution? Are we going to adopt the 2007 um, Ponaco constitution? Ponaco? Or are we going to um, um, even um, adopt... we go back to 1963? 1963, exactly. Are we going to adopt the 2014 Confab report? There are lots of options right now for us to choose from to build this new Nigeria. We cannot keep on saying that the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. Yes, our sovereignty is not negotiable. But for us to stay united, as things are with I but Arewa, the Oduas, everybody clamoring for succession, for independence, for, for to be on their own. We must say, you know what, we need a one Nigeria. But it cannot be the way it is. It must be a new Nigeria. That's why we came up with the One in Nigeria campaign to try and promote unity and also celebrate our diversity. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. I, you know, I didn't interject because mm. um, I, I, I may have to puncture some of your ideologies and, I, I, and all of that. Not, not because I want to play the devil's advocate. No. It's just that sometimes I, I wonder mm. why, I mean, if some of these things... Mm can happen. I wonder if we can walk this talk. Mm. I wonder if we will have a collective, you know, an encompassing buy-in mm. into this idea. Mm. How do you see a, a one new Nigeria emerge in a country where injustice is the order of the day? Mm. Our Nigerian flag is green, white, green, and it's saying peace, unity, and progress, but there's injustice in the system. Mm. I'm going to be taking Jermaine's thought on that when we come back from this short break. Stay with us and join us again. All right, we're back and it's Crossfire Earn Channel 259 on DSTV and UHF 57 on our terrestrial platform. This is Crossfire and you can always call in and let us know exactly what you think about some of our conversations in this studio. Like I promised you that um, we have a barista uh, who is coming to lend his thoughts on the one new Nigeria and I mean that everybody is clamoring for. Is it possible for us to have a one new Nigeria? I mean, Jermaine Sowolu was trying to really establish the basis for a one new Nigeria and um, since he's passionate about it. So he's the conveyor, he's the leader. And uh, we will try if, uh, like I told him and I promise him, um, maybe I'm being pessimistic, I wouldn't know, but I don't see a, a one new Nigeria emerging, you know, in anytime soon. But we have another guest in the studio, Barista um, Evans, Ufeli is in the studio with us, and we will try as much as possible to see if we can balance this conversation today. Barista Ufeli, good to have you on Crossfire this morning. Thank you. Good morning. You're welcome. And um, Jamin is still very, very, very much around. And um, one new Nigeria. Four days ago, Nigeria celebrated 57th 
independent anniversary. And people are clamoring that, okay, going forward, there's a vision 2020, and, uh, and there are so many things tied to that. The economy is tied to that. The development of Nigeria is tied to that. The advancement of Nigeria is tied to that. Um, having a one new Nigeria is tied to the vision 2020. Nigeria should rank one of the best you know, or most valiant 20, I mean, 20 economics in the world by 2020, even though uh, the, the leadership of, um, of the country at the moment is promising that 10,000 megawatts will be constant by 2020. Do you see a uh, one new Nigeria in, in, I mean, any time from now? Jamains can see that. Yes. Um, I will tell you what I can see, but let us just know what you are saying. Well, uh, a one new Nigeria is possible. Okay. But in between that possibility is work. Okay. Because if we do not sit down to address our differences, mm. cross the lines and dot the T's properly. Because if you look at it, the question of um, our differences has proved, has posed a lot of problems for us as a country. I remember uh, during the first republic when you had a regional system. Mm. Okay, I mean, each region had their own constitution. Mm. Each region were separate with their own. I mean, as at that time, the eastern region was the greatest economy in Africa. Then the country was still one. Before they came with the decree 34 unification and brought Nigeria into one centralized entity with a federal structure that is theoretically presented to the public as a structure of diffusion of power, but it's just a parade of a centralization. You understand? So okay. the, the major issue here is this. One Nigeria is possible, but bringing one Nigeria to the fore, if you look at, the, look at Catalonia, look at the Cameroon, you know, it's about economic injustice. If we have unwittingly balkanized Nigeria into geographical zones, which okay. is not even in the Constitution, if we have unwittingly, and each region have, you know, there are states, um, I mean, six yes, states, exactly. and a particular region is lacking in one. Even though geography is so unkind to that region by virtue of population and landmass, but then you have created an unconstitutional acceptable parameter, which is geopolitical zone. Then you should begin to address the economic injustice of that. If you are talking about one Nigeria, your appointment must be all inclusive. Uh, uh, Barry Saofili, I, I mean, as my culture is, I think you have a bias to the East. I think so. It is just a feeling. Well, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, because we're talking about justice. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in the world, once there is injustice, you will hear the cry. Okay. Look at it from history, from Bible days, from. The, I mean, look at the Songhai Empire, if you want to look at the history of mm -hmm. Africa and all that, and you want to track it down to what we have today. We, we have issues on ground. Let us not shut our eyes down to these issues. Let us not say because uh, this particular region have this. I know that from the beginning, the Eastern region had a fair deal of the, of the, of the, of the crops of issues in Nigeria, but at some point they had issues, okay? But then the issues must be addressed. If you say that we went to a civil war where we lost a lot of people, you understand? Mm -hmm. And we need not go there again. And the issues that created the war, you have not addressed it. I actually don't understand what they're saying. One Nigeria is possible. One united Nigeria, strong force is possible. Okay. But then we must address the issues don't, don't, don't and the indices think, of injustice. Don't you think that the agitations coming from the southeast of Nigeria is intentional? Because, I mean, I'm saying it's intentional. I mean, this question is for Jamin. I'm saying it's intentional and, and deliberate, and that is because they have seen a level of willingness in the buhari led government to probably enshrine um, justice in the country. Why is it coming at this time? Why didn't we have this agitation during the Jonathan-led administration? I mean, it... it it's, it's one big Nigeria. How come we never really had this drum beat so, so loudly and so, um, so agitatingly during the last administration? Why now? 
Well, it's just been crescendoing to this point. It has been okay. building up to this point. Okay. You must know that Nnamdi Kanu did not just start his, um, his, his, campaign. his campaign regarding um, the, the IPOB movement, the succession of the Alpha. He had been doing that in the UK four or five years ago. He had been talking, traveling the world. But you've seen what, and this is going to be Alpha situation. It's not just now, it goes back to close to 50 years ago, you know, um, when um, the first Biafra and then our civil war actually happened. So you can see that everything is just crescendoing, and the response responsibility has fallen on the plate of Mr. President right now to address that issue of when it comes to restructuring our own entity. I agree with what he's saying about the one idea is possible, but it will involve work. Work from everybody. Teamwork makes the dream work. Make the dream of I have a problem with this work. Come in. How will, how can Nigeria solve its ethnicity problem? Now, in how what, do we solve the problem of our religious in, differences see, and bring about a one new Nigeria. No, see, in the one Nigeria movement, we, we, we believe in promoting unity and celebrating our diversity, not complaining about our diversity. Because okay. the diversity should be our strength. People, different minds, different ideas, different cons, um, cultures, different paradigms, different ways of seeing things should actually add and make us a richer and a stronger culture. If we see that as a problem, then we're going to have problems. Now, the, talk, the thing about national I I identity is an issue too. Because um, Ashura Jibola Metunubu even said it. He said that at the more point in time, do we come together to negotiate what it means to be Nigerian? It doesn't mean that I'm Igbo first and I'm Nigerian. We have to have the identity. A true federalism whereby different um, if, um, states, different units, federal units come together and say they want to form a whole. They want to come together under a different set of laws to be able to govern themselves with a, with a central government or a federal government. And, and as I said, and when it comes to the 34 and what happened to the unity, unity system that the military tried to impose mm -hmm. to control things, now we have to break things up and say, you know what, what does it mean to be Nigerian? Our identity is paramount. In America, you have the Texans, you you have the people from the south, people from the north. They are all around the place, but they are first Americans. Can we first be Nigerians before we are Igbo, before we are Usa, before we are Epic, before we are from um, the Middle Belt? Can we first be Nigerians? Can we believe in the unity of our nation? Can we believe that our what, what, what unites us is, is, more for, is stronger and better than what divides us? Let's start thinking that way. Let's start seeing a new picture of the future okay. we want to see in Nigeria. I, 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 I was in a happen. forum. I was in a forum, and we were talking about where to start from? That was the question I asked you. Where do we start from to begin to build one new Nigeria? And the question, the Constitution. I, 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 I doubt it. it I am I, I, I completely, I am completely, yeah, yeah. I don't support your position. Your you can defend that, yeah, yeah. but I don't support your position. I, I, I have a clue to this. Yeah. I have okay. a clue to this. I too don't believe it's the Constitution. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I believe it's education. Okay. Okay. And re-education. Okay. The problem we've had over the years is that those who have been around before now have sold to the younger generation that divisible entity that Nigeria is, okay. or that Nigeria seems to be. Now, we must talk to the old, okay, who saw the war, who were born a little bit after the war. Let them teach the young that irrespective of our differences and the mistakes of the past, you understand, mm -hmm. we are one and we are one, okay? Now, let's begin to have fusion. Let's make the NYSE uh, program stronger. Let's create more program for integration. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because we have already intermarried. Marriage has already created exactly. a strong bond. Okay, now we need even social, place of residence. Social place economic, of residence yes. is even now we, we need social economic programs. Exactly. Okay, even the, the, the eastern region we're talking about, they are better off in the one Nigeria. Because if you look at it, the easterners are the most successful Nigerians. If you do statistics, by your, by your, no, not by your, no, by count. You, if you count, by, no, by your bias, no, no, not by bias. Your, okay, no, okay, 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 by your, by your, by your position. I'm not even from there. By your position. What I mean, no, no. <laughs> what I mean is this. Mm -hmm, okay. What I mean is this. When you, when you are talking about um, wealth, and you count people, uh, what, what I'm building at is not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying they are better. Uh, yeah, I'm like saying. I'm saying they are better off in a one Nigerian concept because. They actually have a very small portion of the landmarks, okay? okay? The said portion is not very fertile in land, so they are 
all over the place doing business, commerce and industry. You can't exactly. take it away from them. Exactly. Okay? You understand? I'm yeah. not trying to please them or to talk well. What I'm saying is that we must begin to understand that each of this region, each of this region we have, they are better off in a complete Nigeria, in a bigger Nigeria. Because that is where the market is. Okay, okay? Let, let, let's just take this thought from Michael and then we continue yeah. from the studio. Hello, good morning, Michael. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good to have you on the show. I'm Michael, I'm from Sudan. All right, Michael, talk to us. Yeah, I thought that this what is really, really, really different from television. Can you come out more audibly? I say the question they asked in the radio. I thought that it's from radio I'm hearing, but it's not something. Okay. <laughs> it came to watch. Okay. Ra radio. All right. Now, you know, what, what, when they say something, I'm talking about you, both of you saying that it's not the Constitution. Well, there may be other things, but I believe we should start from there. You know, the f what governs our existence as a nation? is the Constitution. Yeah. What brought us from a military rule to a civilian rule is the Constitution. You know, what made the 1963 um, the nation at 1963 great was the Constitution we had in place. It is the document that, that I'm coming. What, what let has me, let separated me us, let me, what I'm has coming. not even allowed leadership let to do explain. the right thing, let me explain. is because wait, some of the things that wait, need to be done are not even included in the Constitution. I'm coming. So, okay. exactly, that's what you have said now. Yeah. Now, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? Orientation, re-education, all these things are, the, the, when it comes to about righteousness, being right. Now, the foundation of our existence is the Constitution. We have to renegotiate it and say that, what, how would Nigeria work best? Okay. The Ponaco said, let's have 18 um, um, federating units that come together and form one nation. The CONFAB said that we should have six um, geopolitical Geo zones. zones that have different component units coming together as one. The 1963 had what we call the, the six regions, and all of them were independent. And as the barrister, the Leonard Fellow said, you understand, they all had their different constitutions and how they actually operated. You can see the Bible of our nation is the constitution. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot start from um, Z and expect to uh, and expect to have great results. You must start from A, B, C, D. Precept upon a block upon block, a build a great nation. And that's why I believe it's so. If the constitution gives more power to a certain, certain segment based on local government, based on um, um, geographic landmass, based on population, more benefits than the other people. Mm -hmm. If they say in the educational system that the, the um, certain sections will have more privilege than other people to get into education systems, there's a question about that. Okay. And that's why I believe, and I'll end with this, okay. in this thought is that for the Bori administration to experience success, it wants to have success in military, um, when it comes to security, okay. when it comes to economy, when it comes to employment. A restructured Nigeria is the solution to all Buhari's problems. Okay, fantastic. Let's take your last comment. Yeah, I mean, we, we I, not stand I, I, I on want the show. a situation where um, that chapter two of the constitution, talking about our social economic right from section 13, subsection one down to we talk about the fact that the sovereignty belongs to the people okay. through which government derives her legitimacy. Mm -hmm. That the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Mm -hmm. That is the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now in that social economic country, we have all the issues outlined there are issues of economic importance for the citizen. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? Section 6, subsection 6C of the constitution brought an outside clause and said that the government can only do that as at when practicable. What is when practicable is not defined by the constitution. Okay. okay, so now you have until government make that particular part justiciable because you cannot take government to court on that on, on that those issues mm -hmm. and that forms a primary basis of our existence. Okay. Exactly. So, but if you cannot take the government to court to that effect, then it means that it is just there like uh, just a waterlog. You don't have any constitutional rights or to take government to court to enforce it. All right. So until I mean, we make it enforceable, we're thank, still not where. All we're. right. Thanks so very much, gentlemen. Um, I'll take last word from you because yeah. we have to go right now make it like 10 seconds thank you very much i really believe in the one in nigeria i believe that many people out there believe in one in nigeria let's work together let's build together let's make that reality that our dream of the one in nigeria our basic reality visit oneinnigeria.org and join the team I